Okay, number three in our new to DeFi series. I'm Lars and uh, here at the DeFiStandard.com, the work of Mickey B. Fresh. You can check out his Patreon at Mickey B. Fresh where there's a fantastic Telegram group and regular uh, Zoom video gatherings. And then also, of course, uh, Mickey B. Fresh YouTube series that he puts on all the time. Today, we're getting a little deeper now into cryptocurrency. Last time we talked about centralization versus decentralization. Now, three watershed approaches to um, the development of cryptocurrency. The first of those was Bitcoin. We might think Ethereum was the second, but actually not long after Bitcoin came XRP, and then much more recently came Ethereum. But each of them has a special contribution. Um, it used to be Bitcoin number one, Ethereum number two, and XRP number three in terms of um, the value of the protocol, the market cap. Uh, but XRP has taken a dive, and that's another piece of cryptocurrency, is um, the political and the regulatory landscape. XRP is currently going through trials and tribulations with the SEC. Bitcoin and Ethereum have been approved as not securities. So... Bitcoin, the first. Satoshi uh, solving the, the problem of how do you ensure that something is true without having to trust a single authority. And so uh, you develop a decentralized approach to this. You have nodes, computers, uh, run by different people solving problems and they check each other to make sure that there are no cheaters. And once you get an approval on the system that something is okay, then Bitcoin can be transferred from one location, a wallet, to another location. So that was the first, um, the first platform, the first approach to doing this. And uh, it will always be famous, uh, Bitcoin. I mean, it's the name for cryptocurrency still. Uh, people say, oh, Bitcoin, and they mean the whole field of cryptocurrency. There are now over 8,000 different tokens, different coins that have been produced um, in, in the cryptocurrency blockchain field with different purposes and different functions and different utilities. Bitcoin, number one, still far and away um, the biggest in terms of dollar value. So you will hear the term mining, and that's one of these computers that is a node that is validating a transaction as being correct, right? These are all terms, and that's what I mean. It's like you get into this, and there's so many terms. So take a bit a day. Hopefully this is here is a, like a really simple introduction, and then you'll want to get into just more and more and getting familiar with these. So you need to validate that, that the transaction is trustworthy, but to do it in a way that doesn't trust any single centralized authority. So that's the trick. And in Bitcoin, they do this with mining, which means that the miners have to invest in, the, the computers have to invest in doing complicated uh, calculations. And it's kind of a race between these different nodes for the first one to do it. So more computing power, uh, which costs more, takes more energy, gives you more of an advantage, you can get more of a return. It's this kind of a system that's used, spread out amongst a lot of different computers, a lot of different players, so that you get an answer you can trust, but in a way that doesn't need to trust any individual player. So, um, it can take quite a bit of time to do these transactions, especially when there's a lot of activity on Bitcoin, a lot of trading that's wanted. It can back up and take a long time to do it. And it can also become very expensive to do these transactions. So Bitcoin was originally hoped for to be uh, you know, something you could go and buy a cup of coffee with, but it never did become that. It was too expensive to transact and it was too slow. But the reputation of Bitcoin and the fact that there's only, I think it's 23 million Bitcoin that will ever be made, means that it's a, a finite limited supply of coins, which is the opposite of fiat, where the central bank can just print more and more whenever they want. And that's a fundamental attraction of Bitcoin. 
and why people are are investing in Bitcoin, that's one of the big reasons. It's like, well, there's only 23 million of them. So if I have it, it will appreciate. It's like gold, digital gold. Now, gold keeps getting more and more supply as it's uh, mined out of the ground. Bitcoin, currently the supply is going up. I think there's like 17 million in existence now. And as these miners um, confirm transactions, like I told on these different nodes, doing mathematical problems, and when they are the ones that are rewarded with that transaction being confirmed, then they get a little bit of Bitcoin. A little more Bitcoin is made. Up until all 23 million um, Bitcoin are minted and in existence. Okay, so great advantage in being able to store value, and you now have a lot of individuals who are involved, including also corporations now, and Elon Musk made a famous uh, one and a half billion dollar purchase of Bitcoin um, in early 2021. So becoming a big, a big deal. And people are seeing it as a hedge against uh, the uncertainty of fiat money. So uh, these early programmers who got involved in this, they were just like fascinated with Bitcoin. But some of them also saw, oh, it has limitations. Okay, and uh, one of the limitations of Bitcoin is that as it becomes more and more valuable, it takes more and more uh, proof of work, proof of stake on the part of the miners so that they're motivated to give the right answer rather than cheat. Okay, so you have to actually use more and more of the value of the platform to ensure that it keeps giving accurate results. Well, that becomes a scaling problem as it gets bigger and bigger, as the platform holds more and more of the value, a larger and larger part of all of the value has to be committed towards making sure that you're getting the correct answers. Okay, that's proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of stake, the miners, these people who have the computers, the nodes, they have to, they have to invest money or Ethereum uh, to be able to prove their stake, and that's their confirmation that they will be honest. But as more and more value goes on the system, there's more and more incentive to be dishonest, right? You can, you can cheat and you can get this money out, so you need more and more motivation to stay honest, more and more money or work or energy invested. And so you end up against this scaling problem. And uh, those who are outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, many of them say, you know, it's not actually a problem that can be solved. Bitcoin and Ethereum are not set up to onboard trillions of dollars of value. And the direction of cryptocurrency is that it is becoming more and more useful, more and more attractive to the assets of the world, including even things like stocks being tokenized or uh, gold being tokenized and brought onto ledgers, brought onto protocols. So before Ethereum came, soon after Bitcoin, these people who saw the problem, a couple of them moved over and said, let's try to solve those problems. And they created the XRP ledger, one of those being David Schwartz, another uh, Jeb McCaleb, who then went off to form Stellar. Um, so those are two platforms that work in this different way. They solve the, the problem of trustlessness, not by using an investment of energy or by using an investment of money to make sure that people stay honest, but it's solved by consensus. And I don't really want to go into that because I don't really have a great way to explain it, but it's far more efficient. It's far faster, takes far less energy, and is far more flexible than proof of work and proof of stake algorithms. So these people came over and created XRP, the XRP ledger, and soon after that, the company Ripple was founded, and that company has been building on the XRP ledger ever since. And their goal has been to move value um, basically as, as easily as email. Okay, so that's the project that they've been up to. And um, 
There are all sorts of different things going on there, and that is a great reason to be listening to Mickey B. Fresh's videos and taking the time and the energy to absorb what this is about. This is a very, very uh, robust platform with lots and lots and lots of possibilities. It's where I chose to make my investment, my entrance into cryptocurrency. And since I have, lots has developed on all of these platforms. But in terms of XRP, there's uh, the first utility fork off of XRP has happened called Flare. And I'll talk about that in some of these uh, subsequent videos. Um, but anyway, I'm super excited about that, even though um, I, I am the loser on the... Uh, the dollar return at this point between Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP based on its its value now, its price now, and what I, at the time that I came in. So that's Bitcoin. Then XRP kind of solves this problem of speed, solves this problem of um, validating transactions, and solves the problem of energy use. Now, Ethereum came later. And there's a story, I think it's true, that um, Vitalik Buterin, the, uh, the developer, the founder of Ethereum, actually went over and was hanging out at XRP and wanted to, uh, to work there, but ended up going on his own. And Ethereum uses this proof-of-work mode like Bitcoin does, so not the fast XRP mode of settling transactions, the slower, more expensive mode. Um, but what it added, the, the watershed piece that it brought was smart contracts. And it brought the ability for developers to build applications that use these smart contracts. And then they could create their own tokens. And if it's on the smart contract, Ethereum virtual machine approach, those are called ERC20 tokens that can be made to do all sorts of different things um, and the one in 2020 that really got a lot of attention was DeFi the ability to bring value in to transfer value to take loans out um, to put one coin against another in all sorts of different uh, different arrangements so that is a new uh, field DeFi it's built on top of the ethereum platform a lot of those coins in 2020 just exploded in value. Uh, we continue here in early 2021 to be in the middle of a bull run where lots of Ethereum tokens and Bitcoin uh, itself are, are experiencing a huge rise in value. So this idea of smart contracts in Ethereum. The issue for Ethereum, again, comes back to the same as for Bitcoin. It's, it's the issue of scaling. Now, Bitcoin is kind of just moving one Bitcoin around. It's a store of value. But Ethereum is a very active platform. And uh, because it is such an active platform, there's lots of transactions going on. But because they're up against this scaling problem, transactions have become very expensive. Um, for a while, people were complaining about um, transactions costing $50. But now transaction costs are 100 I've even heard up to $600 being quoted to make a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. So great contribution with smart contracts. Ethereum 2.0 is supposed to come out and solve a lot of these issues. But people look at that and some say, oh, yeah, that'll take care of all the scaling things. But the scale that cryptocurrency is talking about is enormous. This movement towards decentralization is an enormous, huge movement. A massive amount of resources will be coming into cryptocurrency. And XRP is actually one of the protocols that is set up to be scalable, to work with these kinds of very, very large values um, on a protocol that will be coming in from outside of cryptocurrency to be using the platforms of cryptocurrency. So for me, that's one of the reasons um, that XRP has been a really exciting thing to study. It seems like they really took a fundamental approach to, to, uh, to the whole field. And they've taken years in developing relationships with banks, organizations, payment providers um, to partner with. So... Um, that's what I wanted to talk about in this one. 
just to kind of give you an idea of the field. And you can now go out and start looking and seeing how do these different things relate to Ethereum, to Bitcoin, and to XRP. And when you look currently, what you're going to see is that many, many different things relate back to Ethereum. They're built off of this blockchain. So this idea of bringing smart contracts uh, to the cryptocurrency field, this idea that you can now program arrangements and contracts has been a huge, huge contribution. Okay, so that kind of brings up us up to a nice point. Not exactly sure what it's going to be next, but I'm going to go get working on that. And I'll soon be back with new to DeFi number four. All right, thanks.